What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you guys some of the cool features, some tips and tricks and some hacks of the W203 right here behind me. Now this also applies to other W203 models so if you have the coupe, so if your car is the same shape as this then this will apply to you as well. So let's jump into the video. Basically, this is just to show people out there who are familiar with the W203 and people who don't have the privilege of owning an owner's manual. Therefore, they don't have the luxury of being able to find out all these different things about the W203. So I wanted to make this video in order to give you a guide to some of the cool features of the W203 and some of the other tips and hacks that I've stumbled across owning this W203. So usually your bonnet sits about there. However, like most Mercedes Benz, when you press this button here and lift it, like so, you can lift it to a full 90 degrees, giving you a better view of your engine so that you can work on whatever you need to in the engine bay. And then in order to put it back down, push the bonnet back a bit, press the button and then let it come down and there we go. We'll click back into the bottom here so that it is back at its normal position. So at the moment, I am charging my battery. See, it's full now. And the points you're meant to use are, this is your positive point, and basically any part of bare metal would be your ground. For instance, as you can see, there's a spark there. But this is the positive you're meant to use. Do not use your battery directly inside there. That's why they have designed this here. It's even a metal point where you can charge directly even when you jump the car you're meant to jump it from this point and the car's chassis not hook it up directly to the battery and then once you're done clip this back over the top so now i'm going to show you guys how to properly jump start your car using a portable jump starter you connect your jumper cables to your device you turn it on this is on full and then we connect positive to this right here that is where your positive is under this red cap right here the negative you just simply connect to a negative point of the car now we can start the car this is how you properly connect jumper cables to your car do not connect it directly to the battery or you can fry some fuses or even cause some damage to the car we'll go in the car now and start the car for those of you who are unfamiliar with the w 3 your fuse box is in here, all right, at the front. This is an Australian car, so it's on this side. If it was an American car, your fuse box would be on that side there. In the car, just on the side compartment right there, and a fuse box at the back right here, in case you ever need to replace any fuses. For those of you who are unfamiliar, underneath your mat is where your, your jack is and your tow hook inside here you will also find a very cool little device this here for those of you who don't know what this is what this basically helps with is when you go to remove your wheels and you go to line it up instead of having to hold it on there and put on one bolt in order to hold your wheel on screw this in so that it will help hold your wheel in place as you put on a couple of bolts first so that you're not trying to hold it there while you try to put a bolt in so that's what this is for I never knew what this was for until just recently and I think it's a really helpful cool little uh, device and you should have this as part of your wheel changing kit seeing as my car is manual usually in an automatic in order to start your car all you'd have to do is go to the second position one two and then simply flick it once but as you can see in a manual car that doesn't happen what I have to do is crank it and that's the only way it turns on it isn't like an automatic car and I just wanted to show that okay so right now I'm going to turn my windscreen wipers on and I'm going to turn them on the fastest and as you can see the wipers are going super fast but what you will notice as you come to a complete stop I haven't even changed the wipers the wiper settings are still on high and as you come to a complete stop, the wipers is slowed down. And then as you increase over 10 kilometers per hour, they go fast again. That's a really cool feature. You don't have to slow them down as you get to a set of lights. 
they will slow down automatically okay now you do have to point your key fob directly at this um, you can be a, a little bit away but not too far you'd have to be within this range press unlock we'll point it directly at it and as you can see the windows go down if you want to put them up vice versa you just have to press lock okay so we'll press lock now and we'll point it directly at it and the windows will go up so as you can see here you have to be within this range here or else it will not work okay unlike the newer cars you can be further away and also the newer cars you don't even have to point it at it but for the w203 you do have to be pointing directly at your infrared bar right there another thing with the key fob is that usually when you lock and unlock the car it will unlock all doors okay however if you hold lock and unlock for about 10 sec 7 seconds and you'll see the little red light LED light uh, register it will change the setting okay so you see that red dot there registering now when you lock and unlock the car it will only unlock one door so now the car's locked press unlock driver is unlocked however the passenger is unlocked then you press unlock again and then the passenger door will unlock okay but when you lock it everything will lock okay but when you unlock only the driver side unlocks and not the passenger when you press unlock again then the passenger door will open okay and then you to, to lock it you just have to press lock and all four doors will lock so when you unlock the car and you leave it for a little while without opening any doors or anything like that the car will automatically lock itself again in about 30 seconds to a minute There we go. So that was probably about 45 seconds and the car locked itself again as you saw. I'm not touching any of the buttons and the car locked by itself. So as you saw the indicator lights didn't come on just then so that's how you know I didn't touch anything and it locked by itself. Check it out. I didn't touch anything and doors are locked. Okay so when you lock and unlock your car it also locks and unlocks your petrol cap. So we'll lock the car and as you can see you cannot open your petrol cap when you press unlock you can open your petrol cap what happens is it has a locking pin here so when you press lock as you can see that pin comes out and it locks your petrol cap when you press unlock it, it unlocks and the pin goes back in so allowing you to open your petrol cap so the cool thing here is that it locks your petrol cap and that's awesome another cool feature with your, your fuel cap is that you don't have to leave it dangling okay normally there is a rubber a, a rubber line that can, that is connected to it however mine has broken off I might have to replace that but what you can do is it has this little spot here that holds your petrol cap while you're filling so that's pretty awesome you have your basic parental lock so you just push that up and then you can no longer open the door when you push it down you can now open the door when you when you lock it which is up you can no longer open the door as you can see but when you press it back down you can open the door in the back seat here underneath here you have your first aid kit that's why it has the first aid symbol there See? that's pretty cool 
you would think that there is a speaker in here, but it is not. It is your first aid kit. Smashing pumpkins on the way. And then of course in your back seat you have your cup holders. Bam. So you have a bigger cup and a smaller cup holder. And another cool thing is that you have a pen holder right here. Yeah, it holds a pen. And also, you have a glasses case right behind the, the glove compartment handle. So you can put a pair of glasses in there and close it. And it will keep your glasses in there. That's pretty cool. You probably already know this, but I wanted to show it anyway. So, you can adjust your headrest by just pushing it back and forth. Unless you have a uh, electronically adjusted one, this that's how you manually adjust your headrest. And, you have a button here that will allow you to, to adjust it high and low. As you can see, just this button here. Voila. And this is your seatbelt adjuster, so you can adjust it high and low also. Okay, and just like most Mercedes-Benz, if we put our window down to a certain height, like so, we have an option called tunnel mode. So once you hold on to your recirculation button, as you can see right now, it doesn't have the red dot on, so it is not on. Meaning that when you press it on, the air from inside the car will circulate. So when we hold on to this, our windows go up. It's called tunnel mode, so that once you go through a tunnel, you can simply hold on to this button and it will close all your windows for you. Once you're done passing through the tunnel, you press on it again and your windows will go back to the exact same position that you had them in. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is how you reset your stepper motor flaps. You hold your front windscreen mister and also your recirculation button. You hold them together at the same time for five seconds and you will start to see the lights flash. But right now what it's going to do is cycle through all the stepper motors and the flaps. It should do this for 30 seconds and then will automatically turn off after 30 seconds. If it does not turn off like mine is doing at the moment, that means one of your stepper motors has broken. Now this is a common fault with the W203s, you know, be warned that uh, you may have to replace yours. A telltale sign of that is this clicking noise right now. That is the stepper motor going bad. You have to replace it. It is a pain because you have to remove everything here from the glove box, the side, all this here so that you can get to the stepper motor. And most likely it is the stepper motor which is positioned just about here but in the center. So about here but back, back around here and about this point here inside. It's already been more than 30 seconds. The reset of the stepper motor is still going. So that lets me know that the stepper motor is bad. Either do it yourself and save a lot of money or pay someone and they're gonna charge you probably about five to six hundred dollars. The only way to stop this now is by switching off your ignition. When I turn my ignition back on, it will have stopped. There is engineering mode for your climate controls. Now I'm not too sure exactly what it does, but all I know is that you hold on to this button here, the rest button, your aircon, and it will go into engineering mode. You would adjust it by pressing both your auto buttons, as you can see. Now I'm not going to tinker with it, I'm just going to put it back to what it was, but I just wanted to show you that that is how you adjust it. Now I'll try to find out exactly what this means, and um, I'll leave it in the uh, comment section and I'll pin it for you guys. In order to exit it, you just press the aircon button again and you are out. If you're ever confused about how to get out of auto mode, all you do is just manually switch, turn this, and it will take you out of automatic mode. You cannot get out of it by pressing anything else. 
you also have to do the same for the other side. Obviously, this is uh, very noticeable, but I wanted to show for those of you who may not know. As you can see, there is an arrow here. So you push on that, so you can remove your ashtray. That is your little coin holder. Okay, and apparently on the newer models, when you turn your sun visor to the side like this, you are able to stretch it out and it can come all the way out to here. But in my car, for some reason, I cannot do that, as you can see. So try it on your car and see if yours can do it. I think it's only for the newer models, but mine is a 2000 model, so the first of this model ever made. And for some reason, it doesn't do that. So another really cool feature with the W203 is that inside your center glove box, you have a air vent right here. When you set it to cool, like aircon, air comes out of here. See how that tissue is blowing right now? Which will allow cool air or hot air to come through according to what you set your climate control on. So if you want heat, you could probably keep something warm in here while it's heating. And if you want to keep your drinks cool, in summer, if you have your aircon on, it will help to keep your drinks cool inside your center glove box. So I'm not sure how it is for other cars, but I have heard that sometimes you can find your auxiliary tucked away in this little area here. And if it's not in here, there is a way to find your auxiliary plug harness by pulling out your weather strip, pulling off the side scuff plate, and inside the carpet, underneath the carpet here, you can find a white plug harness that allows you to connect a factory auxiliary plug to your car so that you have auxiliary. I have seen other people take all this out and connect a factory auxiliary plug so that they can get auxiliary for their factory radio head unit. And this is what it looks like here as you can see in the top corner right now. That's the style of plug you would need in order to factory fit an auxiliary okay so usually when your battery goes dead as you can see here the sunroof doesn't work as it should usually if i click it back like this it will open all the way or if i click it up it will go all the way to the tilt position and as you can see here right now it's closing and i'm trying to tilt it up also when you click the back button all the way it will open all the way by itself so as you can see right now it isn't acting the way it should it isn't responding the way it should what happened here is usually when your battery goes flat you will lose your memory settings and you will also lose some functions and in order to get them back all you have to do is reset it in order to reset your sunroof what you have to do is slowly keep pressing back until you get it all the way to the open position okay we'll keep pressing it back 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 until it is open all the way okay okay and once the sunroof is opened all the way all you have to do now is simply click it forward close it as you can see it's tilted open now and then we just have to click it back and it will reset as you can see now it works as it should so the purpose here was to get it all the way in the closed position whether that is tilt up or closed and then you simply click it back and then it will reset by itself now everything should work as it should as you can see it closes all by itself and then if i wanted to tilt i just press up and it tilts and then if i click back it will go all the way back again. Perfect. Sunroof working as it should. So that's how you reset your sunroof. If ever your battery has died, drained out or died for any reason and you need to recharge it, that is how you reset your sunroof. If your windows aren't working the way they should, in order to reset them, what you need to do is go all the way down, okay, and then Hold it past the pressure point for about three seconds until you hear a click and then you do the same up. So that you put your window up, you take it to the closed position, okay, and then you hold it past the pressure point until it clicks. You heard that click just then? I'll do it again. 
Yeah, you heard that click just then? That tells you that you've reset your windows. And then you do them for all your other windows as well. That's how you reset your windows. In case you ever change batteries or your battery runs flat, you will lose the memory settings of your windows. So you need to reset your windows. That's the procedure. In order to reset your throttle, what you need to do is make sure all your windows are closed. Okay, make sure everything's closed. Nothing's on. Stick your key in the ignition, turn it to the second turn. Two. That's when the lights come on before you start it. And then from here, you wanna push down on the accelerator all the way down hold it there for five seconds three four five okay and now what you want to do is turn it back off without removing the key and then lift your foot off the accelerator there we go now all you have to do is wait for two minutes and that should help your throttle sensor reset not your ECU but your throttle position sensor. After two minutes, just start your car like normal and then go for a drive. When you go for a drive, it's very important that you drive like normal, drive like how you would normally drive, and that way the car can readapt and uh, relearn your driving style. So just a couple of tips for cruise control. As you can see, it tells you how to use it. In order to set the limit for your cruise control so that you do not go over a certain speed, what you do is you press it in first and that orange comes up. Now with that orange light there, it sets the limiter for your cruise control. So if you set your cruise control at say 60 kilometers per hour, once you get to 60 kilometers per hour, you simply click it up and it will set the maximum speed at 60 kilometers an hour and it will not go over that. So that's what that does. Because your limiter is on, it will not accelerate further than that. Uh, in order to turn it off, you just turn it off once again, or you can click it down and it will turn it off. As you can see up here, it has off up there and resume, which is this way. Then, as you're cruising along and you've already set your speed, if you want to just resume your speed without having to reset it, all you have to do is get past uh, 40 kilometers per hour, and then you pull it towards you and it will resume. When you're cruising and you decide to go into cruise control and you set it at a certain speed, you can slowly go up in increments of um, one or two kilometers per hour by just simply clicking up. However, if you go all the way up until it doesn't go up any further, it will go up in increments of five to 10 kilometers per hour. You can also decel, meaning that you can go from 60 kilometers per hour down to like 55, uh, 50 by simply clicking down switching everything off will involve pushing it away from you so you push it forwards like that in order to cancel everything and switch everything off and then once you're ready to resume again you simply pull it towards you and it will pick up the last known speed that you set for your cruise control it pretty much spells it out for you here accelerate and set so um, if you're on cruise control and you want to accelerate you can always hold on to this and it will accelerate until you decide to let it go and then it will stop set at that speed okay you don't have to go to the speed you want and then press set again as soon as you uh, set your cruise control it will stay at that speed as for the D cell you just have to hold it down until you're comfortable with what speed you're at and then you let it go and it will set at that speed just a couple of tips for you for to reset your daily mileage your daily odometer all you have to do is simply hold on to your reset button right here and it will reset your daily okay so you go in your car and you turn the key to the second position or the first doesn't really matter the position will allow you to go through your computer settings you want to press on your buttons until you get to your settings and then you use your arrows up and down to select lighting and you notice there's a plus and a minus sign there so that's this side of your keys right here that is these to scroll the up and down so just to take you through the instrument cluster you select using your arrow keys and you scroll up and down using your plus and minus key right now we're going to go into instrument cluster you click on your arrow it will go in as you can see you can set the time you set it by pressing up and down on these keys once you set one, you simply click up, it will go to your minutes, and then you can set your minutes by pressing the keys here. Press positive, it takes it to 29. And then once you're done, you select it by pressing the arrow key again, and 
it will go out. Then you have an opportunity to set 12 hours or 24, I like 24. Your temperature indicator. This is the indicator at the bottom left of the screen. You can either set Celsius or Fahrenheit. And then display values. You can change it to kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Down the bottom here, you can choose to have it either in uh, temperature or you can have it showing your speed. Here we add settings and then we then go to instrument cluster and then you can have temp indicator in Celsius or Fahrenheit and here you can display values in kilometers per hour from there you can select what language you want and what display do you want here do you want speed display or outside temperature display this is a time where you choose and that's how you change your kilometers per hour here or your speed and then you can also change your language as well that's what you can do in the first setting for instrument cluster now we'll go back in and this time we'll go to lighting we'll go down and we'll select and we'll go inside as you can see here you have the light circuit headlamp mode you have manual and constant if we go to constant I just want to show you what happens okay okay so this is what constant does guys the lights are on right now the LED lights, that's why they're flashing at the moment. I can guarantee you they're not flashing like that in real life. So that's what constant means. As soon as you switch on your car, your main beams will come on automatically. That's what constant is for. So as you can see, we've got the headlamp switched to off at the moment. And they will always be on because they're set to constant. You have the constant. I'm going to go back to manual so I can control the headlamps with my own headlamp switch and besides you have all your settings here you have auto anyway so that when it goes dark it will automatically switch on your headlights so next you have your locator lighting now this is just basically a light that stays on helping you to locate your car in a dark situation so that it stands out and you can find it obviously making it easier to locate the car I just want to show you what locator light means so when you unlock the car as you can see, your parking lights come on and your fog lights at the front also come on. That way you can locate your car much easier in the dark. Your front parking lights come on and also your fog lights. And then when you lock the car, the lights stay on and then they turn off again. Next we have your headlamps delayed switch off. And to break it down for you, you can set how long you want your headlamps to stay on for once you turn off the car and lock the car. This would help out, just say you have a long walk to your driveway and you need a little bit of light when you go to open the door and you can't find your keys. This is what this feature helps with so that it gives you a beam of light and a, a path of light so that it can kind of guide you where you're walking if your car is facing in that direction okay and this is your interior illumination delayed switch off so you can choose how long you want your interior lights to stay on for once you switch off your car and that's those settings for you lastly we'll go into vehicle and in here for winter driving and then you can set it via the plus and the, the negative you can set the limit for your uh, tires whether it be 240, 230, 220, 210 Okay, the lowest is 160. That's what that does. I'll leave mine off because we don't have snow or anything here. This is for your station search. So when you press your arrow keys, you can choose whether you want to search through the stations for your radio or if you want to just switch through your stored memory stations for your head unit. Now this is your automatic door lock on or off. Once you start driving and you get past say about 10 kilometers per hour, your doors will automatically lock. If you leave it off, it will not do that. So the doors are unlocked at the moment. We'll go for a quick drive and see when they lock. Okay, so once you get to about 10 kilometers per hour, the doors will automatically lock for you. Just for those of you who may not have known, you can set the brightness of your instrument cluster via your reset dial right here. Okay, so as you can see, it gets brighter and darker. That also goes for your doors and all your lights inside your car. The lights aren't as bright right now, but we can change the dimness of the light. Same for the lights here as well. You'll see that the bottom goes brighter and darker. So that's for all your um, illuminated lights in your car. You can even check the oil level 
electronically using your instrument cluster. You put your key in the ignition, okay? We'll go to the first turn. With your up and down button, you scroll until you get to oil level, which is there. We'll turn it to the next, the second position. It will start to measure the oil level and there you go, it says that the oil level is now okay. If your oil level isn't okay, it will even tell you how much engine oil your car needs. It's a good way to check your engine oil without having to go to your engine bay and check your dipstick. You wanna make sure that you do park on a level surface. You put your key in your ignition, you can go to the second position. You scroll until you get to your service indicator, like so. Simply hold on to your reset button here for your cluster hold on to it until it comes up to the screen with do you want to reset service interval confirm by using the reset button if you want to reset it you simply click on this button again it will reset for you if you didn't know how your lights work are auto is to have your lights turn on and off depending on how dark it is so when there's light outside your the lights will turn off when it's dark outside your lights will automatically turn on. Now this is your, the adjustment for your beam so you can adjust them higher or lower using this uh, scroller and then you have your parking lights. This is to turn on just your parking lights and also the interior lights for your car which also include all your other illuminated lights as well and then lastly you have your manual override for your main beam. So that turns on your main beam and you can switch that on anytime. Lastly you have these two icons here which are your fog light and your rear fog lights and in order to use them you pull on the light switch and then your front fog lights will turn on and in order to turn on your rear fog lights you pull it again and then you have your rear fog lights on so on that setting there the right parking light will be on on the front and the rear right parking lights on at the front the left one isn't on the right parking light is on for the rear and the left one isn't on now we switch it over to the left. Now we will see that only the front and the back of the left parking light will be on. And what this basically does, it allows you to park on a bend at night time and still be seen by oncoming cars around the corner. It's basically a clear sign to let other drivers know that your car is parked there so that you can be seen at night time. Right now I have the typical fault which is the BAS Brake Assist Visit Workshop. Now normally this happens when your battery has gone flat. So previously I just jump started the car but I'm going to show you guys that you don't have to do anything to get rid of this. You basically just have to drive your car for a little bit and it will relearn how the brake works and everything will be okay. Okay so we're going to go for a drive and I'm going to show you that it just comes off. I'm not going to use a scan tool or anything like that. I've just gone for a drive, now I'm back. And when I turn back my key, it shows only one malfunction. And the BAS has now disappeared. I don't know why that happens, but I guess it's just because it just wants to relearn that your BAS is still okay. And if all is well, it will just go away once you turn off the car and start the car again. But you do have to go for a drive first. That's why sometimes people tell you that in order to get rid of the BAS or SRS error, you turn your wheel all the way to the left and then all the way to the right and it will get rid of it. Because it's showing the car everything is um, responsive and as it should be. So usually, if you want to check your battery mode and go into the secret menu, all you have to do is go to your odometer, press on this reset button three times. But for some reason, mine doesn't do that. I go to every setting, it doesn't work. But I do know for sure that it does work. So what I'm going to do is just post a quick video showing you guys how someone else has done it and it does work. Just to show you guys that it is a fact. As you saw, the reset button was pressed three times rapidly and the battery voltage came up. Okay, so now in order to enter dynamometer mode, you put your key in, turn to the first turn, and then you hold your reset button for about 20 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 
and then you hear that beep. Once you hear that beep, you simply press page down and it will take you to a new menu. And from this new menu, it will even show you your oil level, your software version, your instrument number. You flick the key one more time and it will show you your oil level, your engine, how much um, oil you have in your engine bay. Mine's a little bit low I believe, so I will fix that in just a second. As I do want to show you another way to service your car. We go down again and you finally get to ESP Dyna Dynamometer Test. Uh, from here you can turn off your ESP completely off and you can test your car out without any traction control whatsoever and you can turn them off. That's basically what it shows you. So if you start your car like this you will see that you get errors but it is nothing to worry about. It's just letting you know that that you've switched it off. You are testing the car in that sense. Once you exit it it will be just turn back off again and uh, everything will be fine. So if you want to turn that off, simply go into it again and you turn it off and that's it. Turn your car off, turn it back on and you'll have no more errors. Okay, and well that brings us to the end of the video guys. So I really hope you found this video helpful and it helps you figure out and it shows you some of the cool features of the W203 and also some hacks and tips and tricks with the W203 that you may not have known otherwise. I mean, not everybody has the luxury of having a owner's manual at their disposal. And that's also why I wanted to make this video so that I could share with you guys the cool features that W203 has to offer even though it is a 20 year old car it still is a very cool car and the features it has to offer are just brilliant I really hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads until next time guys this is Mike with Mike's Vlogs signing off bye for now